we're good, we're uh, going to go ahead and test this out in game. So we're going to go up, we're going to click on uh, the 3DS Max symbol, drop it down, select export, and then we're going to drop down from our export, go to our file structure, which was UMP Custom Armors, double click Data, Meshes, Armor, Hide, Female. Do we want to save it in test one or we should save test one? So we're not going to save uh, over the one we've had before. We're going to right click uh, in this little window and go to new folder and we're going to type test two. All right, but before we go inside that test two, just you know, left click after you've created the folder. We're going to go to save as type. Remember, we don't want an FBX, we want a NIF. We're going to drop down the menu select net immerse gamebryo kf.nif select curious light so we get the name in our file name and then double click test 2 now inside of the test 2 folder we're going to save it as curious light underscore zero as a nif file and we're going to select save now you need to make sure that all of your settings match mine they should because from the previous tutorials you already set this up and uh, your NIF plugin usually saves your settings. We don't want weld vertices, so we're going to delete those three. And as soon as your settings are identical to the one on my screen, go ahead and click Export. Let it run through the process. As soon as that's done, we're all done here. We're going to go up here into the upper right hand corner and select Minimize. Uh, we're going to go to our female shortcut. This is the shortcut that actually goes to the game. This is the game engine. Remember, Steam Apps shows you that this is the actual armor that will be used in the game. And we want to go to the armor we just exported, which is in UMP Custom Armors. I'm going to double select that. We're going to go to Data, Meshes, Armor, Hide, Female. And we just created that armor in Test 2, so we're going to double click Test 2, grab Curious Light underscore zero, just uh, left click it, and then hit Control plus C on your keyboard. Then select the folder inside of the game engine and hold down Control and press V on your keyboard. It'll pop up and say, do you want to copy and replace the original file? You want to say, yes, I want to replace it. So now it's replaced. All right, now that we have the armor placed uh, into the game, we're going to go into the game and recheck some of the errors that uh, we already know are going to occur. Uh, that way we can identify how we're going to fix it. Uh, I can almost bet 10 to 1 that uh, the area where the strap was connected to the arm, we're still going to have an error there. Uh, and uh, that's when we're going to show you some very basic, uh, you know, a very basic introduction to vertice weighting uh, in 3ds Max, and we're going to go ahead and fix those uh, vertice weightings by actually going in and adjusting the vertice weights near the arm and detaching that part of the torso where the strap is from the arm. Uh, using actual vertice weights. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up Skyrim. We're going to go back to our save game. Let it load up. Give it a moment. All right now that's loaded. Uh, if you uh, didn't save your game after you dropped the chest, again, it's uh, player dot, you know, place at me, space C2, C, D, 6, space 1, and then press enter, and that'll get you your little uh, case underneath you again. Uh, and then you want to open it up, find your hide armor, and equip it, uh, and then uh, you'll be able to see the adjustments. Now, you can already see. Uh, it's a lot more form-fitting than it was before. The skirt is shorter. Uh, we don't have that weird flap issue uh, behind the knees. But, uh, you know, equipping my axe, pulling it out, zooming in. Uh, look, see? You can see it real clearly. It's still connected to that arm. And yeah, we didn't fix it. So, like I said, we're going to go in and actually adjust vertice weightings. Very simple. Don't, uh, don't worry, we're going to make a very simple modification uh, to the uh, item weight to fix that problem that we're seeing. Uh, it's not a big deal there. All right, so we're going to fix that once and for all. We're going to say, no, you're no longer going to be attached to that arm. Uh, we're going to make sure this time around that it does not reattach to that arm. Uh, we're not going to have to reskin it or anything. We're going to use the skin that we've already created. 
and make adjustments directly to the skin itself. Uh, looking around the armor, a lot of it looks pretty good. Uh, those now here's something to note. Anytime you make a skirt, you're going to have this problem here because there's a bone directly near the butt. It's the pelvis bone. And no matter what you do, things are going to attach themselves to the pelvis bone and you want them to, otherwise you're going to have errors. But if you crouch and you ever have somebody, you know, looking up your character skirt, you're going to see something like this where those vertices are directly connected to the uh, to the pelvis. That's adjustable just by going, finding which vertices are set to a solid one and lowering that number in the item weights, which we'll get into more. And you can also notice if you look at the outer part of the skirt, the fur part that kind of goes around is doing its own little weird thing, which is also adjustable through uh, item weighting, you know, go at vertice weighting rather. Anytime I say item weighting, what I really mean to say is vertex weighting. Uh, those vertices uh, are weighted to the skeleton and tell it how to move. Uh, so we see our problems. We want to go into vertice weights, completely remove that strap so it doesn't connect anymore. Looks like it happened in, in the front side of it, just to the front of the uh, arm on the strap. Uh, and we can maybe take a look at uh, the skirt uh, and you know, try to locate if we if we can those vertice weights that are causing so when we crouch that it does that and it you know those if you look under the skirt it's kind of stretching strangely instead of uh, moving with the rest of it we'll try to blend that in a little better by just changing a few vertice weights now another thing to notice you see how now we can see straight through the skirt if you look it, and we see the stuff that's behind her you know it's it's fine on the back side, but if you look, uh, you know, you do an upskirt on her, you can see through there. Now what we're going to do to fix that is call, we're going to double side the texture, and that's going to kind of make it a little more realistic, you know, so it won't, uh, you won't be able to see directly through it if, you know, uh, you're a perv and you want to do upskirts a lot. <laughs> uh, that'll fix that little problem there where you can kind of see through the armor. We're just going to add a uh, SF double sided using NIF scope. Uh, once we fix this arm issue and take a look at maybe fixing the uh, uh, item, uh, the vertex weights on the skirt to try to make them move a little better when you crouch. Now, really, it doesn't matter. Most of the time, when people play Skyrim, they don't uh, they don't look at the front of their character very much, you know, very often. And if they do, they don't, you know, kind of sit there. Well, some people do, <laughs> but. Uh, We'll not get into that, but uh, yeah, it's it's all fixable by adjusting the uh, vertex weights individually. Uh, so now that we've seen this, the next video we'll go and we'll start taking a look at vertices and how to fix them whenever they don't agree by just moving the vertices away from the problem areas. Uh, all very simple. So I'll see you all in the uh, next video coming up here in, uh, pretty shortly. Let's exit out of the game here. Oh, and uh, I just wanted to note that uh, um, I did have someone mention something about uh, in the first video. Uh, they were uh, going to the registration for Autodesk uh, 3ds Max, uh, and I wanted to note that uh, you know uh, that's a free way to get the program, and most of the time Autodesk doesn't uh, waste their time uh, validating whether or not you're a student. And if you don't want to lie to them, you know, you want to be honest about it when you go there to get the program through the Autodesk Education Program, just get a buddy who's a co you know in college or a family member that's in college and have them uh, you know register for you using their you know their information. Uh, any any student in any college can get that program for free. So if you can't or you don't you know feel comfortable lying to Autodesk about it, which I can almost guarantee you they won't care if you do. They're not going to validate you. Uh, I've never heard of them validating anyone uh, that says they're a student. But if uh, if you're worried about it, just get a buddy uh, that's in school or a family member that's in school and say, hey, you know, I want this program. Can you uh, can you get it for me? You know, maybe they can come over to your house, fill out the information, or fill out the information from their house. Uh, you know, and uh, give you the login information. However you want to do it, you know, I don't care what you do or how you get Autodesk, but you definitely are going to need Autodesk for these uh, tutorials. So, 
Uh, just throwing that out there. So I'll see you in the next video, guys. Uh, have fun.